we welcome Pete Blois from Google talking about Colab uh, and All right. implementation. Um, yeah, so Colab's implementation uh, differs a bit from the standard Jupyter in that we have uh, iframe the outputs. Basically, uh, there's the mainframe of the application where we run no user code at all. And then all outputs, all rich outputs, all visualizations run inside of um, separate iframes. For security reasons, we do not run any user code in the top level frame of the page. Um, and we also have a goal of, of supporting multiple versions of widgets. So we want users to be able to uh, basically upgrade, downgrade their libraries as they as they wish um, and to get the use the version that they want. Um, and we also want to be able to push out new versions regularly without worrying about breaking any um, any previous versions of notebooks. Um, so when users users should be able to open and view notebooks later on um, and see the, the same visualizations that they had when they initially authored the notebook. Um, so how Colab basically works for widgets is um, I'm going to use the, the term like widget manager uh, a lot because we have basically uh, three different uh, versions of widget manager. I should probably get better at naming on this stuff. Um, but inside of the mainframe of Colab, there is uh, there's basically a widget manager thing, uh, which is uh, responsible for um, tracking the state of the widgets in the notebook. Um, so this is just basically uh, building up the entire widget, uh, the widget state, what you would have serialized into the notebook and the output, um, and tracking that, and then uh, dispatch, dispatching any changes to that state. Um, to any outputs which actually need the state updates. Um, and then that thing also needs to handle the output widget, which is sort of a special beast. I'm going to go on a bit of a rant, which is that it's a bit of a pain in the, the way that it sort of processes output messages. Uh, I wish that that was done on kernel side, because that basically means that any uh, anything processing Jupyter output messages, like display messages, basically needs to be output widget aware if it wants to support a widget environment. But anyway, um, the Jupyter manager in the root of the notebook, um, in the mainframe of the notebook, uh, tracks all the state and can dispatch state to the output frames. When a display message comes for a Jupyter widget in the output frame, um, and one needs to be displayed, then we basically uh, create a widget manager at that time in the output frame. And this is again our this is our widget manager wrapping a Jupyter widget manager. Um, so we create a widget manager in the output frame, um, and then that will request the state for the widget from the mainframe, um, render the widget, uh, subscribe to any com messages uh, for the output frame, and then uh, like render it into the into the DOM. Um, yeah, the, so we have a very bare bones um, vanilla widget API. Here, I'm going to try and present. Uh, actually, I'm par fairly terrible at presenting um, on here. We see it. You're muted. We cannot hear you. Yeah, when you started the screen share, the, the audio went on mute. Peter, yeah, there you are. Still no sound. Pete. Uh, it looks like you're not muted, but we still can't hear you, Pete. Did something in your audio settings change? Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. For some reason, it's uh, it's not letting me talk while I present. Um, so there is a link in the in the notes doc um to this other uh to this uh d.ts file, um, which basically defines our public surface area. From the uh, from our output frame, um, and inside of there, you'll see that there is a widget manager API. And now this thing is really really bare bones. It says basically render. Pete, do, you want, do you want me to share my screen, and then uh, you, uh, and I'll just sure go to the you, link. Sure you can. Sure. Okay. Um, 
see. Yeah, and so if you open up that first one um, and scroll down towards the bottom. So this is our entire public API um, that we make available to JavaScript. And so any JavaScript um, outputs in Colab can uh, register for com messages. Um, they can, uh, another good one is that they can like say, open up the file manager, um, like view a file inside of Colab. Um, but we try to keep a very minimal API of what like basically JavaScript can do. Um, and this is what they can do without requiring browser extensions. I'd actually really like to see an API like this in Jupyter Lab as, as well. I think it'd be really useful um, to be able to have like uh, JavaScript access uh, com messages without, without requiring um, an extension to do it. And I think that'd be a great thing as part of the migration from uh, Jupyter Notebook to Jupyter Lab code base. Um, because Jupyter Notebook does make it very easy to do this. And, and I think that'd be useful. Um, this is a, like another discussion that I keep on like uh, bringing up. Um, if anybody is, is interested in this, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, and uh, I, I would love to see a standardized support across more notebooks of ways to uh, basically just leverage comm messages and stuff. Um, but then we have, we have this uh, widget manager API. Um, and this says, uh, render a model ID into an element, return a promise when it's rendered. Very straightforward. Um, the widget manager, when it's created, we give it a widget environment. And the API on widget environment available is, uh, it's a method right above, or the class right above there, interface right above there, is get model state. So we can request the model state, um, and that will request the model state from, from the mainframe. And then on top of that, there's also a comms API, a really minimal comms API um that it can like register for comms so uh when a widget is going to be displayed we just call we create a widget manager and we say like render this widget into there um the widget manager itself is going to uh basically be the um it's going to it it has an instance of the standard jupyter widgets widget manager the interesting thing inside of colab is that um basically we can have a widget manager per uh, display object in the in the output frame. Um, and so you can have actually have multiple widget managers in the same output frame. Uh, and the widget managers will like sync each other based on the, the widget state messages, like dispatching the broadcasting those um, between themselves. And so they will they will sync each other within the output frame and within other output frames. Um, and now, now uh, we also expose the ability for users to specify what widget manager they want to use. Um, we do this by, uh, in output messages in the display message, we've added an additional, like in the display message for Jupyter widgets on the metadata, we sort of hacked in a little bit of, a, of an extension in there on, off of metadata on the display message for the, uh, for the display item. Um, we added a collab custom widget manager URL and that URL is an ES6 URL, and the ES6 URL has to uh, basically implement that Jupyter, that, that widget manager module um, interface, which is uh, a couple lines up. Um, so it's just an arbitrary URL that we will load up the, uh, we will load up the, the binary from that URL, instantiate the widget manager, and then start rendering, you start using that to render the widgets. Um, and we allow anybody to basically create their own widget manager, um, create their own version of the widget manager. Right now, there's only one implementation that we have, which is the like CDN widget manager, um, which is one that loads the implementation of the widgets from uh, JS Deliver. Uh, we need some place. We basically want some place off of the kernel to have these um, have these widgets. We could have them on the kernel as well. We want to support loading, um, viewing notebooks later on when you do not have a kernel when you, or when you are not connected to a kernel. Um, but this uh, this ES6 URL that's passed in the notebook, if the user wants to be completely uh, like only talking to their kernel, then that like widget manager can be loaded from the kernel, and all the widget implementations that it loads can be on the kernel as well. Um, that is completely an implementation man implementation detail of the widget manager. Um, right now, one of the problems is, is that our widget manager, like the one that, that we're using right now, um, the implementation for that is basically using the Jupyter, Jupyter Classic like widgets. Um, so these are the, it's using the like require JS modules. 
I don't know what the uh, I don't know what the future holds for those with um, with Jupyter Notebook Seven coming along, um, and then also uh, supporting like the Jupyter Lab widgets. I think that's going to be a bit more work. I haven't looked at the latest um, stuff with the federated module compiling um, with Jupyter Lab. Maybe we can do it. Maybe we can make something. Uh, it, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I haven't like explored that too much. I would love it if there was a sort of standard or, or a, an established um, sort of portable uh, widget module type thing um, that we could rely on. Uh, this design is is ideally like flexible enough to to migrate to whatever implementation that is without doing having any breaking changes. Um, but we will we will see. Um, let's see. I actually just blew through a bunch of that stuff really quick. Um, I don't know. It's really straightforward. I, I thought I thought that I was only going to have like ten minutes. I don't know if I have, if I have more time. Um, so when, I do you want take questions? when do you want questions, Pete? I'll, I'll take questions right now. Oh, and actually, hey, uh, Jason, if you want to switch over to the uh, the collab notebook, quick. And then uh, scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, let me unmute myself. Uh, down to the bottom of here. Oh, this is yeah. a, this is this is a notebook, right? Right. Yeah. Welcome to collab. And, and so, <laughs> yeah, and, and so if you scroll to the bottom, uh, very bottom. Uh, so, so a funny thing, like uh, you, you aren't signed in, but if you execute that code cell, there's two sliders there, and you'll actually see that the um, th that they are. Uh, you don't have to sign in, but uh, the first one is actually um, IPy widgets like uh, v4. I, I I I get so confused by by the IPy widgets versioning because the uh, there's the um, the widget space has one like version strategy. The widget manager has a different version, and then there's IPy widgets themselves. But anyway, so the first one is the uh, is the the V4 um, like widget, which is the like jQuery widget, and then the second one is the V5 widget um, because it switches the the, the widget man manager in between the two of them. Um, and so with like Ita's work to the uh, the no UI slider um, is the second one. And the, now the, there's a little bit of a bug um, that I, like I, I need to fix, but the um, the JS link causes problems for us because basically we work off of a pull model where where you're given like uh, where we say render this widget like with this ID render this widget and then it will suck all the state that it needs off of that. But JS link is not is not like basically rooted anywhere in this DOM that's being rendered. Um, and so uh, like, I, I know what I need to do, but I, I just haven't gotten around to it, which is that like when you request a widget um, that we need to also push some additional state of like other widgets, which are referencing that one um, to get JS link to work. Uh, so when you do this, like the first slider will work. Um, we'll update the second slider, but the second slider will not update the first. Um, now, since you're in view mode, uh, com messages are not are not like sent to the kernel, um, so this is sort of like disconnected. So I'm in view mode. Um, so th there's there's still like there's still a couple of bugs. I have like a slow stream of bugs coming in on this. Um, I sort of uh, implement this or work on this uh, part time, I guess. Uh, visualizations are are sort of a, a passion of mine. Um, but I have a lot of other work uh, that that competes. Um, other questions? Yes, I would have some. Um, so, when looking at the stack um, for IPA widgets, uh, it uses basically comms under the hood, and then comms uses the typical message protocol or the format, basically the message format, and. I'm wondering when designing support for Apple which is in Colab, did you think about just using a facade in the iframe? Like um, looking at like when we're looking at the um, uh, on a messaging channel view, then basically uh, you only need to have like a web socket and basically the a fetch object for HTTP requests. And um, as long as those message messages somehow arrive in the iframe, um, and there's like a, a pipe that starts at the, at the kernel and ends in the iframe, basically anything else in between would be transparent to the implementation. And I'm wondering if you considered this, this uh, design. 
yes, a bit. Um, there's a couple of reasons for it. One is that um, we mediate all access through the kernel, um, through the mainframe. And part of that is uh, security reasons. The outputs can use comm messages, but they cannot do execute messages. They cannot execute arbitrary code on the kernel. We don't want an XSS in a data visualization to uh, lead to uh, arbitrary code execution on the runtime. Another one is uh, supporting rendering of these notebooks um, when you are not connected to a kernel. So that, that's why the widget state is stored in the mainframe of, of the notebook. And, and widget messages sort of go through the mainframe because the when a rendering when you're rendering an output and asks for the state, if you're connected to a kernel or if the if the cell execution was from the current current um, session, then it will go to the kernel. Uh, if you're loading it from the saved notebook state, then it's going to uh, the state's going to be fetched from the notebook itself. Uh, Peter, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is Shao from Databricks. Uh, you you mentioned like you allow a user to uh, load a, sp a custom widget manager from a CDN, right? Uh, I wonder what makes you to make that decision of this flexibility, and did you see any like uh, any use case based on that? Um. Yeah, so one thing is is that we don't we don't load from CDNs by default. The user has to enable this, and the user can specify like the URL that they want to load from. Um, so we try to make it opt in. Um, and the reason why it, I mean it's CDN. Our implementation is just hosted on uh, Google.com location. Um, the reason is uh, to support multiple versions of widgets, basically, um, and to allow development of custom widgets. Like when I'm developing this locally, uh, I will point it to a URL that's just served off my local machine. Um, but we want to we want to enable anybody to uh, load, implement the widgets that they want and not really lock them into into our designs. I see. So what if uh, maybe I, I don't have like really fancy needs, but if a user wants to just um use the API widgets uh, from seven to eight, how, how would a user perform that change? Uh, so in, in, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Um, from seven to eight, uh, for, <laughs> it's sort of funny right now. Um, the, the way that it is designed to work is that um, there would be a separate URL um, for the widget manager, for the the seven widget manager and the eight widget manager, and that they would just point to like the eight widget manager and say, "I want this widget manager, which is going to be compatible with iPy widgets eight. Um, the The way that that this one right now, though, is actually implemented is that uh, is that all of our widgets right now are compiled against the the v eight. Uh, because it's be, it, this is uh, completely implementation detailed, just because it's being compiled with ES build, uh, because ES build is nice and fast and it's pretty pretty easy to use. Um, and uh, but it was a real pain with the uh, jQuery UI, and then the work that I did of uh, that no UI slider made it much easier to use um, to use the the V8 than the uh, than the V7. And uh, because of that, we have shimmed a couple hacks. Um, basically, to get uh, to get the the V7 widgets to work on on V8, uh, you know, I'm sort of crossing my fingers that that this will work. Uh, at some at some point, it could completely fall apart, and we just need to have a have a separate URL and and have two binaries. The the design supports it, um, but if we can support everything from from a single one, or at least like V7 and V8, that'd be great. Um, it's not a long term plan to support everything from a single binary. That's just that that's sort of infeasible long term. Thanks. Any other questions? Vidar had his hand raised, and Michael seemed like he had a question or two. Everyone else should go before me. I just yeah. wanted to uh, give a comment. I was uh, really late. Sorry for that. I couldn't make it. Um, I was uh, reading a notebook, and I noticed this. Um, 
like the renaming between version four and five. And we had a discussion about this a few weeks ago about like uh, P widget, Luminal widget, etc. And the conclusion was that we were, we're trying to do our best to, uh, to stay compatible. Uh, so I think I could say like, uh, if like it's safe to open a PR to have uh, things like um, aliases to be future and backwards compatible because um, I looked at the code, like what you've written to support like two versions and we have like similar code lying around in many libraries and we shouldn't do that. Um, so I think we should be uh, more careful about breaking things and adding in a clean way um, backwards and, and future compatible code. Yeah, along those lines, um, the other thing which uh, which was a bit of a pain um, for the compatibility was just compiling a two ES6 output uh, broke a lot of widgets um, because of the the backbone um, yeah. mixing was was a bit of a of a pain. A pain. Um, yeah. So I, I I provided some sample code here that you know can be a workaround. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. mentioned earlier yeah. that. Go ahead, Vidar. You, you mentioned uh, earlier that you there were some concerns you might have about like the widget managers and making it easier. So you know, if you have any concrete suggestions for how to make things easier or whatever, you know, please open an issue. So it's because you know, if if it's just mentioned in a meeting, it, everybody will forget it and it will not yeah. exist by the time it comes to yeah, time to implement I it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, uh, my my complaint on the widget manager is mostly that the API surface area is enormous um, in that it includes like Backbone, it includes jQuery, uh, it includes Lumino, um, all of that. And so we, we try to abstract that to be a, a much more um, like sort of bare bones vanilla API, which is just that like right. element give us state ID. So, uh, I, I don't know what what degree like that's an actionable feedback for for Jupyter widgets. Yeah, so one of the things that we've done for 8.0 is to separate the base package and the base ma manager packages so that you know you can have breaking changes in the manager that will not mean that everybody who depends on the base, controls package will need to update their dependency to support the new major version. So I think once that has been deployed and an accepted pattern, we can make more breaking changes to the base manager without it being as disruptive as it would be currently on 7x. So you know if, if one of those changes is make things more insular or separate different API parts, uh, that's that's something that you know uh, would be useful feedback. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think I think that'd be a great improvement. You know, just uh, some of the the name changes are sort of gratuitous, like easy changes, um, easy easy breakages that can be avoided. Um, but honestly, like uh, we, the the compatibility is is very difficult to try to maintain um, a, a functional API, and I've seen that fall down in multiple projects, like. Uh, in, in the past, not not specifically this one, um, and so it's great to try to maintain compatibility. Um, you know, having supporting sort of side by side uh, APIs is what I see as the the sort of most reliable way of maintaining back, backwards compatibility. Like uh, Colab still supports rendering notebooks that were created in like 2014, um, and so we're we're sort of aiming for a very 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 minimal API. Um, that can be uh, long-term compatible. And e even what you mentioned, Vidar, uh, I think some of the dependencies that you have are still having like major version um, changes and like all of that stuff. That, that means just like Lumino is still going to have, you know, uh, changes and trying to get the entire API surface area to be uh, long-term stable is going to be very, very difficult with the size of that API it is my, my impression. Right, so that's why I was suggesting if you have any solutions for how to modify the manager where you can reduce the surface API or at least split up the current API 
into you know more <laughs> yeah. you know or, or insulate the stuff that we don't currently expose that we or we currently expose that we probably don't need to any any suggestions for how to make it more viable would be useful yeah i, I mean i i'd lean towards um you know something of of the api that we've exposed in the uh in that 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 linked like a d.ts um, uh, file, which is basically just render a widget. Here are the columns. Um, here's like an API to get to get the widget state. Uh, and that that doesn't really help the implementation of these. Um, yeah. Got oh Tobias, I've got three quick questions, but Tobias first. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, okay, great. Um, so thanks for the talk. Um, I was I have a question which is a bit more general than probably Florian's ones. Um, could you so and it's relevant to us at Databricks uh, at the moment because we are also uh, implementing iPad widgets in the Databricks notebook. So I thought, could you walk uh, us through um, the decisions that you've made along the way to come up with the final decision, um, which is the the widget manager in the mainframe and also in the output frame plus having some custom logic in the mainframe, um, specifically with any alternatives you have thought about and that you've then discarded and also, and why you've discarded them. That would be very helpful for us. So, yeah, uh, we can't run user code in the mainframe. So that means that, you know, widget, widget models are not going to be, are not going to be instantiated in the mainframe, that's user code. Um, and just the output widget support in order to do that there has to be something that basically uh, intercepts uh, display messages and uh, or the, the comm messages and knows how to like intercept and redirect the uh, display messages for output widgets. Um, and that, that's basically what that mainframe does. Uh, the mainframe also, the mainframe support also uh, is there to um, basically do the, the notebook state for saving and loading from the notebook in persistence. Hey Pete, can you uh, talk a little bit about uh, the performance considerations that motivated your design? Performance considerations. Jeez, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not sure what. Uh, I, I mean, we use. I think the primary thing for for the performance on this one would have been like just the the use of ES6 modules versus like some something else. Um, to get the code loading into the output frame. Um, the, I mean, output frame code loading has to be fast. Um, there's not, I, I guess there's not too much on the performance aspect of this one aside from that. Um, for, for specifically for these, Colab does support like, um, we call them virtualized outputs, which are outputs which are only rendered when, uh, when they're in view. Um, and so that means that that output that like widgets off screen widgets won't be instantiated until they're scrolled into view. Um, but I, I don't think that there's too much performance specific other than those. Uh, other than there's also like notebook size, I guess um, uh, Jupyter Lab is, is now doing this as well, where only widgets which are referenced um, are being serialized in the notebook. Um, just to keep the notebook size down. Okay, maybe another question from my side, which was uh, probably hidden in the other questions. Um, do you, uh, can you talk about any alternatives that you thought of and not pursued because of specific reasons? Uh, no, like, uh, I don't know. I, I I think our approach is fairly straightforward, so um, I, I can't really think of a. I the the support for the custom custom widgets was uh, I mean that lagged for a while. So what alternatives did we uh, pursue? I think that was um, sort of we wanted just to just to expose bare bone comms APIs and hope that people would recreate rich visualizations. On comms APIs without having to like reimplement widgets, um, you know there there's a very passionate widgets ecosystem. Uh, people have done a great job on it. 
Um, and so that that uh, that approach didn't, didn't succeed. I have a, a couple of quick questions. Uh, you mentioned uh, what's going to happen to these AMD modules that the, the classic notebook is distributing in Notebook 7. Notebook 7 uses the JupyterLab uh, extension system, but but what would you like? Uh, you know, what what you like? Yeah, no, no. ES6 modules. Like, wh what do you think I, would be best? I, I have I have a strong preference for ES6 modules. Um, you know, just compiled with you know something like ES build, not not like federated modules or something like that. Uh, I try to stick to standards. Uh, Jason, you know you know where I'm coming from. We've had this discussion in the past. Um, so just like ES6 modules, um, exporting like a, a fairly vanilla API is is where I go just because that, that feels like it is the standard it will be supported for a long long period of time um so we could do yeah I, I, mean, I, I think this impacts other projects such as like Sphinx and uh, like I think everybody who's doing widgets outside of Jupyter lab are still using those required js ones um so like, like I, I think that the the Jupyter community this is something that like uh that we need to think about. Um, so my preference is ES6 modules. Um, I'd love to get others as well. So we could do ES6 modules as publish a bunch of ES6 modules that all depend on each other. We could do a Webpack build that presents a single, you know, external interface to one ES6 module. That's sort of a compilation of of all the all the widget manager and everything uh, that like the required. Yeah. The, like, yeah. Yeah, again, that, that's where that's where this API surface area is like a problem because if you have a, just a widget with like all of its dependencies and that is just going to basically uh, translate to render an element, that's 500k. Uh, it used to be it used to be 800k. Now it's 500k. Like great work, I, I tell you. Um, so 500k and uh, th that's for for just that that module for that widget, which is way too much. And so figuring out some way of basically like breaking that up. Um, would be really great. But as a general question, if you could pick one birthday present from MyPy Widgets that would make your life easier, like what what change in core or what uh, you know extra facility in core uh, would make your life a lot easier? I, I mean, at, at this point, that the uh, the module loading, like, like figuring out that because that is uh, with with notebook going away, that is sort of like a looming problem. I have a, a question. It's more mundane, like about the, your implementation of the widget manager. So I, I was trying actually just before. It doesn't seem that at the moment you support creating widgets from the front end. What do you mean? Oh, uh, uh, I would have to look into that. Um, we, we do have the ability to like register com targets, and they do. I. I I believe the widgets are created from the front end. It may be the ordering of so, the messages. So apparently, like the API is missing in the widget manager right now. It's called new widget, and you create a model uh, from the front end, and it creates a counterpart to Jupyter widget in the back end. And that's used in funny widgets like the controller, where we discover the number of buttons in the browser and create them from the from the front end. But it's used in other places, and there are quite a few widgets out there that use it. Uh, for example, the Bicupla toolbar uh, buttons are created from the front end for various reasons. And uh, some of the actions actually are created so, from the front end. So if my understanding is correct, um, no, I'd have to I have to try it out, I did, uh, like I'd actually run it, uh, because it's a little bit roundabout. I believe that it creates the com and that the widget is then created as a result of that. Because I, I know like the, the BQ plot uh, toolbar, I, I've gone through and done that. And yeah, so, so I know the API, which is not implemented, but these things, like some of these things are, are working. I, I'd have to dive into that. Um, I, and I, I think that, that'd be, I, I mean, if, if there are examples which are broken, um, like I'll, I'll jump on those. Um, so in but, core, I, you have the controller widget, which is yeah. uh, for like gamepads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. Thanks. So that uh, my question was like, there is no interesting reason for this to not work. It's just probably just a no. small oversight. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything? No, I, 
I, I, you don't, you didn't see me like walk out and like get my gift bag, Martin. <laughs> Is there anything that we can support in we can do in core to support this use case that you have of i uh, of iframe isolation? That's something that we don't have sort of in the open source Jupiter. We may eventually adopt because you know lots of institutions need some sort of isolation like this in a enterprise setting. Uh, again, again, I mean, it comes down to the the API surface area. Of, of widgets, like the fact that, that it's still built around like Lumino is a bit awkward because we have to load up like Lumino into the into the output frame. And basically, you know, this isn't a Lumino application. So we sort of like uh, fake out some of those lifecycle messages. Um, and just, just getting that to be as, as simple as possible, I think would make it so that these widgets can, can work in more environments. And and maybe this, some of these questions about your wishes are double-edged swords. What would you like to work on in core? <laughs> <laughs> if you had if you had a two months sabbatical, like what 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 thing would you want to work on? Uh, I mean, for for widgets or for just like Jupiter. I mean, I, I have I have interests like across the board, <laughs> so it's like you can strain it to widgets for this talk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I mean, uh, figuring out the, uh, the, the, the difficulty is, I mean, this is the same, same difficulty with like Jupyter notebook, which is just that the API surface area is like monstrous and not breaking half the world is, uh, th this is like such a difficult area. I would go work somewhere else for two, two months. <laughs> this doesn't sound like vacation because it's like all the changes that I would want to make are just like going to break everything. And that doesn't sound fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to try to clean up this API. Uh, maybe, you know, in a similar way th that we created like a minimal API here is creating like a really minimal API, but then having some like shim API that still supports Lumino and still supports all of this other stuff, but is layered on top of the bare bones. So that if you want to target just the bare bones widgets that they can, um, but then legacy things can load up like all of the dependencies that they need. This is this API service has been a boondoggle on us as well. Like I've wanted to get rid of jQuery for a long time, but Backbone Views exposed as an API and people use it, and so we're forced to ship jQuery, for example. Um, yeah. IPy widgets eight is going to change everything. No, I, we we still have the shipping in IPy widgets eight, but IPy widgets nine. <laughs> I think once we transition people to IPy widgets eight, then we can start talking about okay, what can we remove. Uh, but keep the community still with us. More can we break? <laughs> well, we're we're a few minutes over time. Uh, thank you so much, Pete. Uh, we really appreciate you taking time to to discuss this. And and can I offer that you'll you're happy to talk about these things? Uh, you know, in, in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. We would love to see um, more support for widgets. Uh, I, I'd love to see more standardization around this. I think that a lot of the stuff that we did, um, and uh, you know, other environments such as Sphinx and etc., um, co uh, CoCal, you know, all of these. Uh, I, I, th I think getting standardized widgets and all, also like this, is my hobby horse is outputs. Um, standardizing more outputs. I really want more standardization around outputs. Colab really wants this. Like we are, we are very passionate that the notebooks that we create will work well in all environments. Um, outputs is is a, a big issue. Um, and also getting on that, uh, I, I am I'm very opposed to extensions being required to view a notebook in the way that it was authored. Uh, that you should be able to take a notebook, give it to somebody else, and they should just be able to load it and see it without having like some instructions of here are all the extensions that you need to uh, install. Um, so anyways, don't get me started. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pete. And uh, stay tuned. We'll, we have several other people that have implemented IPy widgets that uh, have expressed interest in, in presenting how they do it, uh, ex implement IPy widgets in their uh, platform. So stay tuned for uh, future, future talks like this. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Pete.